there and welcome back to Beginner's Fab. My name is Eric McGrew. I'm the host of the show and today we're going to talk a little bit about a simple way to make some um, reducers for bolts or some inner bushing sleeves so that you can have the bolt that you need also have it um, protected inside the bushings because a lot of times that stuff kind of comes apart and the bushings start to separate from that inner sleeve and and that inner sleeve can do a lot to make sure that that bushing stays um, good for a number of years or at least a number of months depending on how you use your vehicle. So I'm going to show you a brief way that I found to do this in a simple format and give you some alternatives as well. To be able to effectively create a or fabricate a uh, bushing sleeve or a bolt reducer or whatever it is that you want you're going to have to have a few basic things. First off for sure you're going to have to have a few measurements that are important such as in this case you're going to have to have the outer measurement of the two bushings together now this right here is a it's around two and seven eighths wide for my application now that doesn't mean that they have to come out to this very edge so you could cut it down to probably in my case around two and uh, five eighths something like that and it'd be okay as well so you just have to kind of determine that on your own as to how far out you actually want the bushing sleeve to go or how far out you need the bolt reducer to go. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to have to have the actual size the diameter of the bolt, not at the threads, but at the actual shoulder or the uh, main body of the bolt itself. And make sure that your collar on the inside actually has that dimension. You're also going to have to have the interior size of your bushing because you've got to make a difference between the bushing or the interior diameter of your bushing and the exterior diameter of your bolt. In the case that I have my my interior of my bushing is right at 19 millimeters uh, in diameter. Inside the leaf, sling, leaf spring eyelet it's around 18 and a half millimeters. Uh, it's it's just how it worked out. Now my bolt I know is actually a 16 millimeter bolt. So the question is how do I get that reduction out of some standard part? Well the answer really is for me at least using this one inch um, OD tubing. This tubing is around two millimeters thick so it's like I want to say uh, two millimeters is 090 wall so it's not super super lightweight but it's not super heavy either by any means um, and then I knew that the interior diameter was much larger than what I needed for the bolt so what did I do well if you look right here you can probably see that I've already made one cut that one cut helped me reduce it down enough to evaluate what size it is but I still don't have enough of a reduction to make it fit either inside the bushing nor do I have enough to make it fit the bolt tightly. So what I've got to do now, so I've got gnats flying around me from the yard, um, what I've got to do now is I've got to measure out the exterior which still measures at 22 so that's way too big for the interior that I have on my bushing and the interior measures at 18 which is two millimeters too large for the bolt uh, for the bolt that I need so what I need to do really is take into consideration the thickness of an angle grinder blade that I'm using um, the the cutoff wheel and I probably need to make two more cuts from the experience that I had with the first uh, redu the reducer so what I'll do is I'll take a pair of channel lock uh, not channel locks vice grips and I will actually hold this tight. If you have a bench vise, even better. You can hold that tight, closed, cut, and then when you reduce it, reduce it not by just hitting each side to close it together with a hammer, but hit it on each side and then right here where the seam is so that it actually closes round. If you just hit hammer it on these two sides, it'll just become oblong and won't fit correctly but if you close it in on by hitting it on each side a little bit and then finish closing it in by hitting right here so that it closes together then it'll keep a really round surface and it'll actually work really well and you just need to keep doing that until this interior size is the exterior size of your bolt 
Then once that's done, we'll have to grind down the outside sleeve until it gets to be the same exterior diameter as the interior diameter of your bushings. Now, this is something that you have to be really careful about because what you don't want to do is you don't really want to reduce this too much so that for the bolt to go through, there's a big gap. If this can stay completely closed, even better. In fact, I would suggest welding it if you can and then grinding it smooth. Also, you don't want to over grind the outside so that it stays loose inside the bushing and it doesn't affect the proper tension that it should to keep everything from creating excessive wear. If this is too loose on the bolt or if it's too loose on the inside of the bushing, you've actually created one more piece that's creating motion wear or excessive wear that doesn't really help your cause. So it's a really good idea to go slow, do it little by little, keep test fitting, and make sure that you get it right the first time. Here on the table you'll see a few of the tools that I'm using at the moment to, to create this, um, fab up this inner sleeve and I, I need to make a few, um, I guess, notes of importance here. Now, I, I really discourage people who don't feel comfortable with using angle grinders without their guard. I, I, I really discourage you from using them without the guard if you don't feel comfortable with it. I have become accustomed to it due to the fact that I wear out my my um, blades to the most minimal degree and I also cut in a lot of odd locations and things with it because I don't have any other form of cutting here. So I'm always cutting inside chassis and that kind of stuff and with the, with the guard on it it's difficult. But it can be unsafe. For that reason I use full face guards plus I use um, goggles. So I have two forms of protection over my face just in case this blade blows up. And I have had the blade blow up. Still, even with that, you have to be careful because while I'm grinding, especially when I'm grinding like I'm about to be doing here, the blade can come fairly close in contact with your hands. So you have to be really, really careful. For this reason, as I've been told a number of times, I should be using a bench vise. And I agree. If you have a bench vise, or you have the money for a bench vise, or you have the place for a bench vise, that's always the safest manner to do it. So I would really suggest at least considering that option if it's something you think you're going to be doing in the future with any kind of frequency. Um, I'm, I'm looking into that option for the future, but right now it's not an option for me, so I'm doing what I have to do. Now, I'm going to get started and I'm going to cut this out so that I can uh, show you how it fits onto the bolt. As I had mentioned before, here, when you're reforming um, this stuff, you want to make sure that you don't just hammer on the area on the side, which is, is the fastest and easiest, just like that, closing it in on the sides. While that is, oh, there went my angle grinder. While that is not a bad idea to help close these up, it's not the best idea for closing it completely because you don't want to lose the form that the the tube has so as you can see I'm not only closing it up on the sides but I'm also hammering it right on top of the the actual cut itself and that helps keep a more round shape in my in my uh, in the tubing itself so you know it takes a it takes just a little bit of work here to get that to, to fit like you want it to. 
and my experience tells me that I'm going to have to actually go back and cut this one more time. Now, I like to use the device grips or the bench vise or whatever because you can put pressure in. If you notice, it's closed there now, so when I cut, it actually takes out a full width of the blade once again. That's really important because if not, you'll have to keep going back and grinding and grinding and grinding. But this way I know that when I cut each time, I'm actually taking out one and a half millimeters at a time out of the um, full diameter of the, of the tube. And so I can close it up a full one and a half millimeters each time. So now that's done, and I'm going to close it up just a bit more, clearly. Anything loose on the table will bounce off as you've seen, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so if you look now, you can see that the tube is fairly round still. The question is, will that bolt fit around it or inside this? So that's what we're going to look at now. As it happens to be, it's still a little too loose for my liking. So I'm going to have to go back and cut it one more time, reduce it a bit more, and then go from there. Now you can see that that fits a lot better, and that's a lot cleaner of a fit. It's, it's fairly tight. It's not too tight, but it's pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Now I've got to go back and check the outside diameter. As I can see here, the outside diameter is actually not that bad. I could probably make it work as it is, but it would be really hard to get in and out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to grind the outside sleeve a little bit. And this is important to realize or think about too because what happens is when this goes inside the eyelet of the leaf spring bushing, it makes it squeeze a bit on the inside too so that it actually is a little bit narrower on the inside diameter of the bushing once it's inside the eyelet of the leaf spring bushing or the leaf spring eyelet on the leaf spring itself. So you need to make sure that you test it both ways to make sure that this is actually going to fit in both situ situations. In the world of fabricating, there are a few basic tools that just are really, really important no matter who you are to have. And they're not too expensive and they're really, really going to help you out um, to make things easier. And some of these tools, it took me a while to actually buy. I don't know why, but because I just didn't get around to it, I guess, or I don't know. But like the C-clamps are really, really beneficial to have. One reason is because they help fix things in, in places so that you can tack weld them, so that you can grind them, so that you can do a bunch of stuff. But they also help in the placement of bushings and this kind of stuff. Because, for instance, in this case here, since I have a two-part bushing and I have the inner sleeve, it's easy that when you start to push the sleeve in, one of the bushings starts to push out the other side. But with a C-clamp and a couple of pieces of metal, you can actually get these things fitted in and it come out or go in pretty easily. Taking them out is another topic, but we're not going to deal with that at the moment. So, for instance, in this one, put that in there like so. Take this one, put it in here like so as well. If I can get it in there, there we go. And then in this case, what I'm going to do is actually put the bolt in here. So I'm going to take this hammer and just started. beat that sleeve in like so. Okay, so that actually started pushing the sleeve out on the back side like I had mentioned. So what I can do now is I can actually take this here It's 
spread it apart. And since I have and this spread apart as so, giving me the space I need, what I will do is I will put that vertically like so. And then I'll put that piece of metal. Now this piece of metal here I like because it actually you gives me the distance I need between the bottom of the C or the back of the C here, the C clamp, and the space between the screw. That allows me to actually set it in this form on the C clamp so I don't have to try to balance it in my hand because if it was cut shorter then I'd have to try to make sure I held that up there and did it and it gets kind of complicated, but with this format, I can let it rest on the bottom of the C-clamp, have it where it's at the screw, and now all I have to do is start screwing this in like so. And it starts to push the, the bushing in just like it should. Sometimes you have to stop, readjust, and slide it over, because as it's a polyurethane bushing it does flex and it's not always the easiest thing to do but it it will work out just be patient and that's how you can get this all fitted in and voila it's done. Now I have my my sleeve in there. I have the bushings inserted, and I can put my bolt in. So works perfectly, and I don't have the play. It's tight. So instead of spending the money for reducers, if you have a couple pieces of tubing like that, and you have a few little tools, you can make your own reducers or um, bushing sleeves as you need to replace even the ones that come out of the or that rust out of the um, rubber bushings. Generally though, if they're in a rubber bushing, they are vulcanized in, which means that they are formed inside their actual rubber at some point. And that typically means that the rubber has been deteriorated and has been damaged as well. So if you have rubber bushings from the factory and the sleeves have come out, it's a good idea to evaluate the actual bushing itself and see if it needs to be replaced because typically it will need to be replaced. Just a tech tip that I've learned recently as well. So. Um, keep that in mind and hopefully this information helps you out. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the show. Thanks for seeing what I'm up to and don't forget to stop by and check out all the websites that I have going on. You can stop by beginnersfab.com. You can stop by ericmcgrew.tv and you can stop by Offroad Independence where you will find my off-road podcast that I do. Don't worry, I'm not the expert. I interview other people to um, help them shed their light on off-roading and we just talk about off-roading because, well, that's what we all like to do. We like to talk off-roading. So if you want to do that, I encourage you to do so. Please feel free to like, comment, and share on all of my videos. Uh, you can also uh, please subscribe to my video channel on YouTube. Um, one more thing is, is that I have t-shirts, stickers, and other swag available through Zazzle. They're good quality products, so please stop by ericmagrew.tv, check out the left-hand side of my page. There is a link to Zazzle there, and you can also go straight to zazzle.com forward slash off-road underscore independence and check out my store there. So all of that really helps me keep these shows going. Um, this is all out of pocket, and I any help that you guys were willing to give and any promotion that you're willing to to take on by wearing my swag or putting a sticker on your vehicle is very much appreciated. If you buy a shirt, if you put a sticker on your vehicle, please send me photos of them. I'll put them up on the page. Thanks guys. Till next time, hope you guys have fun. Hope you're inspired to do a little bit of fabricating yourself. And as always, please be safe in all that you do, whether it be willing or fabricated. So until next time, have a good time and I'll talk to you later.